also all the IPL action. It was uh, SRH versus RCB. History makers SRH defeat RCB. Travis uh, Head and Pat Cummins excel in that. We'll bring you all the highlights. Alright, let's start by talking about an industry that has not just arrived but has exploded into the scene. What do I mean by that? Now, this is an explosion of an industry that has happened world over, not just in India. So, if I were to ask you today to name some of the largest segments or industries in India, what would you say? You would probably say cricket or you would say Bollywood. But what if I told you that there is an industry that has overtaken film entertainment to become the fourth largest in India? It is gaming. Gaming, gaming tutorials, gaming reactions, games reviews, games developing, animation. The list is long on what all is happening in this sector world over. And sample this. India has about 450 million gamers with over 90 million paid to play gamers. Gaming appears to provide an income to more Indians than manufacturing and is only set to grow. Look at the amount of money involved here. In the past three years, the online gaming industry has grown at 28 percent, reaching 16,428 crores. That's just FI23. In fact, it's said by 28, it's set to rise to 33,243 crores. And that's just the report that has come from eBuy. And think about it. Why wouldn't it, right? There is a widespread Smartphone penetration, improved internet connectivity, growing youth population and the development of local gaming content. In fact, take a pause and look at the room around you. Even our parents these days are caught up playing solitaire and candy crush on their phone all the time. So much is the craze that even the Prime Minister acknowledged it. So we thought let's sit down with some of India's top gainers and gamers in this case and show you exactly how does it work, what's really going on over here. So let's welcome on the program now this morning Anshu Bhisht, he goes by the name Gamer Fleet and Mithilesh Patankar, Mith Pat as he is known as uh, by uh, people world over. Good morning boys, I have a lot to learn uh, in this segment but Anshu let me begin with you. You know, there was a time, and I'm still that generation, there was a time when we thought gaming was time pass. And now gaming is a full-time profession. I want to understand from you, when people ask you today, on Anshu, what do you do for a living? What's your response? It's been around seven years now that I've been in, uh, see, uh, that I've been a professional uh, gamer now. <laughs> to, uh, time ho chuka hai. It started working, I think, five years back, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And honestly speaking, I don't want to say anything like but honestly speaking, I don't think so. 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 Mostly people know what I do and everything. Hmm. So, I think that I don't know what I do. I like how you've said relatives. That means it's not just the younger generation, even the older ones are acknowledging it. That's like a takeaway for me. Mithilesh, how did gaming start for you? Can you share some bits on how did you get into it? You're an engineer by profession. I mean, I think I started like six, seven years ago when, you know, I used to be in college mm -hmm. and I used to do mimicry. So, I used to do a lot of Bollywood actors mimicry and I used to take part in this college competitions and all. And I always wanted to get into the entertainment industry, just that I didn't know how do I get into it. So, mm -hmm. I gave, I, I used to go for a lot of college fairs, etc. And then somehow I found, I, I decided to upload this one video on YouTube in which, you know, I combined like mimicry and I combined gaming because gaming was booming a lot at that time. Uh, everybody was playing PUBG mm. and I was like, okay, if I have to play PUBG, I'm not good at the game. So what else can I do in PUBG? So I play, I, I made a video in which I did Shah Rukh Khan's mimicry, but in PUBG. So mm. I combined these two things and uh -huh. I think that was one of the first yeah. few videos which went viral and that's how it all started. Right, right. But Mithili, so you're not a typical gamer. You do a lot of gaming commentary and you do what is now being called as gaming entertainment. Am I understanding that correctly? 
yeah yeah so there are like lot of different types of gamers in india that's the best part like for example gamer slate he's he's really good at the games and he plays games very nicely but for example <laughs> me i try to make games like in a more funny way so there are different different types of there are pro gamers there are streamers there are i don't know there, there are many types of gamers in india so yeah i have this i'm yeah. i'm part of this world in which we do more of commentary funny game play and it, it's fine even if we are bad at the game we just have to entertain the audience <laughs> fine even if you're bad at the game that's interesting anshu how does it make hardcore gamers like you feel uh, on how the industry is expanding you can talk about gaming so this is like a gaming review i was reading somewhere that people are now paid to just test out the apps as well no 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 i i am i am not a purity in any way but the uh, the thing is uh, according to me the entertainment industry especially the gaming entertainment industry is like open market like anyone who can entertain the audience has a place in it like uh, for example mm. i i do play minecraft and other games very seriously like yes i am good at it uh, like that but at the same time i do i do funny stuff in the games as well i i try to make the uh, like i try to make my audience laugh all the time i try to make them uh, see if they are watching my videos so i hope they have a smile in their face uh, at the end <laughs> hey listen that's the motto for tbc also we also want people to have a smile on their face so it's good to sort of indulge with both of you this morning but mithilesh tell us you feel a uh, gaming has got that sort of sport image now there was a massive debate on whether it's a sport or not you think now it's achieved that i mean since the last 5 years especially i think gaming just started in india especially you know where it started through pubg at that time and uh, then later a lot of gamers like me we came up who, who played like different types of games and i think the industry has just started growing since the last Two three years right now, and uh, you know the next five yeah. years they say that this is going to be the biggest industry not only in India but in the world, which is crazy. Like it's going to, like I had yeah. read some statistics, it's going to cross like Bollywood, Hollywood, everything. Like gaming industry is going to cross that. Uh, so it's going to be insane. Like I'm 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 very happy to be in this position where you know I have this subscriber base of 15 million gamers in India. So it's it's exciting wow. for me for sure. Hmm. Yeah, but Mitli, help me understand who are these subscribers? Who are the people who are listening to you religiously, following you? Like I said, your subscriber base is bigger than many celebs in the country right now. They will be any anyone who is between ten to say twenty five. So anybody, like you know, all the kids will know us. All even like twenty four, twenty five years. So I have like a very different type of subscriber base because I have got audience because of gaming. plus i have also got audience because uh, because like when i got married like people started following us uh, also after that and stuff like that so i have like i think i i my audience ranges from 10 to 25 something like that so this is game fluence really that's what i'm seeing over here anshu coming to you uh, do you think gaming has really arrived and should be considered a sport uh, there are a lot of people who would say that if you're not doing a physical activity how can it be a sport <laughs> बहुत फनी चीज है बोलने की आ, मतलब कुछ साल पहले जब हम लोगों ने स्टार्ट किया था सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ तो मेरा तो मतलब फैमिली से इतना सपोर्ट नहीं था और मोस्टली किसी का भी नहीं होता क्योंकि hmm. हमारे पापा लोग उस एरा से जहाँ पे फोन्स भी नहीं होते थे उनके टाइम पे और हम लोग उनको बोलते थे कि हम कंप्यूटर पे गेम खेलते हुए फोन पे गेम खेलते हुए विल मेक मनी तो वो तो लाइक like, इम्पॉसिबल वाली ही चीज हो गई उनके लिए सोचना भी कि ऐसा हो सकता है बट फनी है कि जैसे मेरे पापा मैं जिस समय पे स्टार्ट किया था तो इवन दो मैंने अपना पूरा सब कुछ खुद से किया था मैंने ट्यूशन पढ़ाए थे जॉब्स करी थी तब जाके एक कंप्यूटर बनाया था सेकंड हैंड सब कुछ किया बट फिर भी मैं जिस समय गेम वेम खेलता पापा जब गुस्सा हो जाते थे जैसे रात को सीधी सी बात है क्योंकि आप एक्साइटमेंट दिखाते हो वाइल प्लेइंग द गेम आप चिल्लाते हो आप खुश होते हो ताकि ऑडियंस को भी मजा आए तो पापा लोगों की नींद खराब होती थी फिर वो जाके पूरे घर की एम गिरा देते थे तो इफ आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग समथिंग मैं लाइक कर रहा हूँ तो पापा जाके एम गिरा देते थे पूरी और फिर सब कुछ बंद हो जाता था Uh, तो उस टाइम से और अभी जब uh, मतलब लाइक आई एम अर्निंग गुड आई एम अर्निंग आई एम अर्निंग वेल घर पे सब कुछ है मैंने पापा की जॉब छुड़वा दी है मतलब जॉब छुड़वा दी है मतलब 
कि मतलब पापा आपको अभी काम करने की जरूरत नहीं आएगी सबके घर पे ऐसा रहेगा तो आ, मतलब आ, वो चीज से वहां से वहां तक का उनको मतलब अंडरस्टैंड कराने में को लगे सात साल लगे पूरे बट एट द सेम टाइम अब वो चीज वो देखते हैं कि हाँ उनको भी मतलब थोड़ा वो खुद भी इंटरेस्ट लेते हैं कि गेमिंग क्या है ये सब और जैसे हम लोग पीएम सर से मिलके आए तो अकॉर्डिंग टू मी तो वो तो बहुत ही बड़ा वैलिडेशन पॉइंट हो गया फॉर एवरी वन फॉर एवरी वन हुई गेमिंग हु इज अ गेमर और एस्पायरिंग टू बिकम वन तो उनके लिए तो ऑलरेडी मतलब वो चीज सच हो गई कि हाँ ये कुछ करा जा सकता है इस फील्ड में भी क्या बात है अंशु आपकी तो काफ़ी आपकी लैंग्वेज में खतरनाक स्टोरी है एमसीबी गिराने के बाद अब आप खुद ही अपने पिताजी के पूरे घर का यू नो भार अपने ऊपर आपने उठाया हुआ है दिस इज़ क्वाइट इनक्रेडिबल बट जब स्टार्ट कर रहे थे तब पेरेंट्स को क्या बताया कि कैसे परस्यू कर रहे हैं गेम जब मैं ट्वेंटी का था मैं भी मित्र भाई जैसे ही अपना मैं जस्ट एक्चुअली बैचलर्स में आया ही था तो उस टाइम पे मैंने भी ऐसे ही स्टार्ट किया था सो एनी वन कैन डू इट एट एनी टाइम यू जस्ट हैव टू आइदर बी रियली गुड एट द गेम सो यू कैन टीच अदर पीपल हाउ टू प्ले और आइदर यू हैव टू बी वेरी एंटरटेनिंग सो दैट पीपल हु आर वॉचिंग गेट एंटरटेन एंड लाइक बेसिकली आपको एक या तो पर्सनैलिटी या तो फिर बहुत ही गजब गेम प्ले पर जाना पड़ेगा एंड टू द पीपल हु आर वॉचिंग दिस अगर आप ये देख रहे हो मेरे को बहुत सारे बच्चे आके बोलते भी हैं कि भैया मेरे को भी आपके जैसा बनना है या फिर मेरे को पेरेंट्स आके बोलते हैं कि ये दिन भर आपको देखते रहता है बोलता है कि मैं भी ऐसा कुछ करूँगा तो मैं उनको बस यही बोलना चाहूँगा कि मैंने खुद भी ऐसे ही किया था जब जियो आया था स्टार्टिंग में मैंने भी यूट्यूब देखना स्टार्ट किया था तो मैं खुद भी ऐसे ही करता था कि मेरे को इंडिया में एक दो यूट्यूबर्स थे उस टाइम पे गेमिंग में बाहर पे बहुत थे बाहर तो किस टाइम से ही अभी भी बहुत खतरनाक है तो मैं उनको देखता मैं बोलता था कि मेरे को ऑनेस्टली पैसे वैसे से कोई मतलब नहीं था मेरे को पता भी नहीं था कि यू कैन अर्न मनी इन दिस फील्ड एज वे मेरे को बस ऐसा लगता था कि लोग वाह यार वो आते हैं कहीं तो हल्ला मस्ता है उनको लोग देख के वाह वाह ही कर रहे हैं तो मेरे को वैसा कुछ चाहिए था हमेशा से तो आ, मैंने भी वैसे ही स्टार्ट किया था तो जो लोग भी अगर ऐसा देख रहे हैं खास करके जो भी यंग ऑडियंस ये देख रही है तो आप करो फॉर श्योर बट अगर बेसिकली मतलब वही है कि जो भी देख रहे हैं तो अगर आप लोग करना चाहते हो फॉर श्योर करो गारंटीड गिव इट अ ट्राई थोड़ा इसमें लक फैक्टर भी है विद द स्किल्स एज वेल बट मैं इतना ही बोलूंगा कि अगर आप कर रहे हो तो डू इट लाइक एस लाइक हाउ वी डिट या या सो अंशु की बहुत ही अच्छी एडवाइस के बाद कि अपनी पढ़ाई भी करते रहें और गेमिंग अगर परस्यू करना है तो करते रहें बट अंशु की का यू नो लाइफ स्टोरी देखिए उन्होंने ट्यूशन पढ़ाए सब करा खुद अपने पैसे से पहला गेम जो कंप्यूटर था वो खरीदा और फिर उससे खेला सो उससे भी थोड़ी इंस्पिरेशन ले बट मिथिलेश सिंस आई हैव बोथ ऑफ यू ओवर हियर आई हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वॉज द मीटिंग विद द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हाउ डिड दैट हैपन हु गॉर इन टच टेल अस लिटिल बिट अबाउट दैट it was honestly amazing amazing experience because like uh, till it happened we all decided wait we are not going to celebrate let mm. it happen let him come in the room let him say it let him talk to us and only then we are going to be like oh my god it actually happened so yeah it was a crazy experience and mm. when we got to know about it we all were excited about it we were just like nervous till the time he came in front of us we were nervous and even for the next 10 minutes he was like sitting in front of us we were introducing we all were nervous but once the introductions were done i think uh it's just like he made us super comfortable and we had a great conversation we played games with him also so yeah yeah but uh, mithilesh as i let you go let me ask you another question anshu ne to bahut hi acha jawab de diya ki kaise padhai bhi karni hai games bhi karne hai pursue bhi karna hai lekin uh, if you had to make a comment to people who still don't take gaming very seriously to those people what would you say yeah i think uh, right now especially in india we have got one of the greatest validations also when the prime minister himself has met uh, all the gamers and it's a very good validation that hey the gaming is going to be taken very very seriously in india like we discussed about game development as well so like in gaming there are so many career options not only a youtuber mm. people are also game testers by the way if you don't know about this so you can just like earn yeah. by testing games you can play games and earn money <laughs> 
and you can also do like you can make videos on youtube you can also live stream yourself or you can be part of a great game development company game studio and you know there are so many career options in gaming so i would recommend if you have any interest in entertainment yeah fair in gaming in general then i think it's time to explore especially if you are above the age of 20 if you are a 10 15 year old kid please study padhai karo <laughs> that's a good advice all right anshu and mithilesh thanks so much for joining us here on the breakfast club and giving us an insight into how it works in this in this industry so many people are following you and you clearly have a lot of high standards to meet over there so good luck with everything that you guys are doing so let's uh, move on now and uh, go from just understanding gaming to getting to the other not so nice aspect which is about gambling really so there is a lot uh, being said at the moment on not just the gaming industry booming but the addiction involved with it with online traps being made and people losing a lot of money gambling of course being another source of addiction as well so we uh, thought let's uh, try and understand what does the policy on this really say what does the law say and how do you really draw a line joining us now is pooja tikre she is an advocate and somebody who's been watching out for this space quite closely hi pooja thanks uh, for joining us here this morning i want to start by understanding a very technical definition and what does the law say when it comes to gaming how is gaming different from gambling how is it really defined um so i think gaming is uh, essentially um games that don't really involve uh, preponderance of chance uh, gambling on the other hand are games that involve uh, preponderance of chance so uh, hmm. that's the element that really distinguishes gaming from gambling uh, it's it's very difficult to sort of um, give you a straight jacket definition of what would constitute hmm. a legal online game versus something that would be termed as gambling um hmm you will need to look at the components and the structure and um you know the the revenue structure of every game to really um uh, give you a real assessment of whether that game constitutes a game of skill or whether it is in fact gambling i see a game of skill or gambling that's the difference really but multiple platforms say that they use skills uh, but there is always an element of luck there is always an element of uh, we'll double your money or an element of okay pay this much to unlock this thing how is that defined under the law because it starts with something petty but we all know by examples now on how addictive this can be for young and old alike well um there the regulation doesn't really provide for you know a very strict um uh, percentage that would allow you to measure the element of chance in a game um but several courts in india have um assessed uh, whether fantasy sports is in fact a game of skill and game of or a game of chance and they have held that fantasy sports are games of skill um so similarly you know every uh the jurisprudence in india whether it's a game of skill or or constitutes gambling is um uh, is is growing you know every day and there is now in fact a regulation that has come in which requires uh, self regulating bodies to be set up of course those haven't been mm. set up yet but they will be um and those self regulating bodies uh, are are going to be represented by experts in the field of game Hmm. Hmm. But self-regulation. How do you think this is going to work out in an ecosystem like this? Do you think we are ready to go there just yet? Well, the gaming ecosystem is really, really large. In fact, I think India, um, in many ways, leads the online gaming industry in the world, um, and it's growing every day. Uh, having said that, I think um, the the rules as they stand today. uh and these rules came the it rules came to be amended uh just for your information early last year uh and brought in you know certain guidelines and regulations specifically for online gaming um and those rules uh provide for um you know self regulating bodies that uh enable uh uh 
enable sort of oversight over online gaming players but those self regulating mm. bodies are themselves also supervised by the ministry so there is a limited amount of okay. oversight that the ministry exercises mm. Mm. or would exercise over self regulating bodies mm. um so mm. it's not going to be you know like an autocratic body that will uh, sort of decide how gaming in india should work sure Sure. All right, Pooja. We leave it there for now. This is a fascinating subject, and a lot more needs to be discussed, said, spoken, debated about on this one. So we'll sure to return to that. Thanks so much for joining us. At the moment, with that, we're going to slip into a break. Coming up on the other side, enough of gaming. Let's get some yum salads, and we will be talking about a summer special watermelon salad. Chef Sneha bringing that to us. Come right back for that. Amir Sarfraz Tamba the man who killed Sarabjit Singh an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura Punjab so that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail now we're learning that Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura in Punjab uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said is what we are learning so that's the big update that is saying killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab and uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail and uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab so that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan now we're also learning that uh, this man Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said and uh, in fact tamba was released just 2 years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple cctv in the locality but despite that he has been gunned down in pakistan's punjab amir sarfraz tamba is the name of the man who killed sarbjit singh who was an indian national who was lodged in pakistan's jail and was uh, killed Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013 Sarbjit wo- Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore and now we're learning that the killer of Sarbjit Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan CNN news 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this Abhishek what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news Well, we know that uh, this person uh, Tamba who was also responsible for the killing of Uh, Sarbjit Singh in Pakistan's court lakpal jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was uh, roaming scot free and uh, since uh, for a very long time uh, he was uh, uh, he has been a criminal uh, and he had a criminal background the, the interesting part is that he was killed by two bike burn assailants and that happened at a place which was Welcome back. Let's talk about something that everybody is talking about these days. It is the weather. No prices for guessing. It has become really, really hot. So we thought on TBC, let's bring you something that might help beat the heat. Remember, all the nutritionists keep talking about how, when the temperature rises, you should really cut down on how much you eat and what you eat. So here's something yum, but also something healthy for you this summer. Chef Sneha has more. This refreshing salad is perfect to beat the heat this summer. We're making watermelon feta salad which takes just a few ingredients and takes no time to make. So let's make this. We start by chopping a watermelon into small cubes. Try and remove all the seeds that are visible. It'll just make it easier for you to eat. Now we just transfer this into a large bowl. It just makes it easier to mix. I'll also be adding a cucumber which is completely optional. You really don't have to if you don't want to. You can just keep it a simple watermelon salad. We do this to just remove the bitterness. Always taste your cucumber. 
Transfer this into the bowl too. Now that the chopping is done, we're going to make the vinaigrette. In another bowl, mix together balsamic vinegar, honey, salt, Dijon mustard, pepper and olive oil. Just crumble in some feta. Now add in the vinaigrette and finally finish with some mint. Just mix all this up. Serve this immediately and dig in. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura, Punjab. So that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail. Now we're learning that Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura, in Punjab. Uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Saeed is what we are learning. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. And uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said. And uh, in fact, Tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple CCTV in the locality. But despite that, he has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the name of the man who killed Sarbjit Singh, who was an Indian national who was lodged in Pakistan's jail and was uh, killed. Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarvjit Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarvjit Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba, who was also responsible for the killing of uh, Sarabji Singh in Pakistan's court Lakhpal jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was uh, roaming scot-free and uh, since uh, for a very long time uh, he was uh, uh, he has been a criminal uh, and he had a criminal background the, the interesting part is that he was killed by two bike burn assailants and that happened at a place which was much secured an area which had buildings and offices of senior police officials and administrators in Lahore. And uh, it is also very well uh, monitored and surveillance equipments like CCTV are all there. So probably one would be able to understand the fact that how this uh, this entire operation or this killing happened. But for now, we know that two bike bonus villains were involved in the killing of this uh, person who was responsible for... Welcome back. Let's talk about a story that is a topic of debate at every household. It is a topic of debate online and a massive one. And this is the rivalry between Apple lovers and Samsung lovers. And I've got news for you, Apple people. Apple has lost its spot as the world's biggest mobile phone seller after a steep sales drop in South Korea to rival Samsung as they retook the lead in the global market share. Samsung has been the biggest seller for mobile phones for 12 years until the end of 2023 when the sales of Apple phones actually overtook it. Global smartphone shipments that really defines who's on top, who's not. The interesting bit is who's on number three and that is actually Xiaomi. Take a look at this package for more. Apple has lost the title of world's top phone maker, overtaken by Samsung. That's according to figures out over the weekend from research firm IDC. It estimates Apple phone shipments dropped about 10% over the first quarter of this year. 
that saw its market share slip to 17.3%. The iPhone maker appears to be suffering as rivals step up competition. South Korea's Samsung launched new flagship models over the period, driving a strong rise in sales. Its market share rose to almost 21%. China also looks like a problem for Apple, with industry experts estimating its sales there were down by almost a quarter in the first six weeks of the year. Some companies and government agencies are restricting use of its phones in the country over national security concerns. Those moves mirror US government restrictions on Chinese apps on security grounds. Local brands are also upping their game. Xiaomi is now closing in on Apple in third place, with over 14% of the global market, while Huawei is gaining ground too. Its latest flagship phones have been hailed by Chinese media as a triumph over US sanctions on the firm. All right then, what do you feel about this Apple versus Samsung rivalry? Let us know in our feedback section online. But let's move on now to something uh, which is not just gaming but beyond that. Now remember we've spent the first half of the program today talking about games. But enough emphasis perhaps is not be long ago on the program on TBC. We had got how culture is intersecting with gaming and how history is intersecting with gaming. Remember enough of... Uh, India of, or Indians playing Navy SEALs, but this time there are lots of games about Tipu Sultan, about the history of India as well. Now there's a latest app and latest Indian gaming app in the market. It is much like Farmville, but here you get to create your own temple, which I found really exciting. So take a look at how this app really works and we'll speak to the founders. Section of gaming and spirituality, a phenomena that is taking the gaming world by a storm. Now imagine stepping into a world where you can embark on a virtual pilgrimage right from the comfort of your own home. One such game that's capturing the hearts of millions is the Sri Ram Mandir game by Fun Stop Gaming Studio. A game just like the famous Temple Run, except with a spiritual twist and a great learning experience. जो भी भक्त जा रहे हैं उनसे ईटे मिल रही है आपको और फिर आप उससे पूरा गेम मंदिर भी बिल्ड कर रहे हो तो उसमें फील आता है कि हाँ आप राम राम मंदिर गए नहीं हो लेकिन आप राम मंदिर को बिल्ड कर रहे हो तो वो भी ऐसा लगता है कि हाँ मेरा भी उसमें थोड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन गया है. What sets this game apart is its attention to detail. From performing arthi to managing the construction of the temple, every aspect is meticulously designed to immerse players in the traditional and cultural experience. The game also features devotional hymns in the backdrop, adding to the spiritual ambience. With over 5 million downloads in just two months, the Sri Ram Mandir game is proving to be a runway hit among Indian gamers. And it's not the only one. Other games like Ram Mandir Darshan game are also seeing a surge in popularity, reflecting a growing trend of spiritual themed gaming. The gaming world is taking a spiritual turn and the possibilities are endless. All right then, so let's bring in the founders now. Joining us uh, from our Delhi studios now is Prashant Vijay and Tamesh Sharma. Hi Prashant, hi Tamesh, welcome to TBC. Uh, not surprised that Indian gaming and India rooted gaming is really picking up. So first uh, Prashant, uh, take us through what really got you guys thinking about this concept. Sure, uh, we have been creating games for a while, uh, almost three years now. What we do is we focus on trends and look at data. More interestingly, what are the recent trends that are coming up? This was during the month of November and December when we are looking for Indian specific games, right? Because of the fact that a lot of audience in India have not had exposure to really high quality games, something that they really understand. Mm -hmm. And that's when we, we looked into data and realized, hey, this, this need for a temple based 
application or a gaming application that we can actually take mm. and as you said rightly said through a farm bill kind of a mechanics the idea was to sort yeah, of create yeah. a game uh, right that can cut across yeah. the age groups right from a 6 years to a 64 year old because one they understand uh, everybody knows how a temple looks like everybody knows the feeling to it so we built this based yeah. on nostalgia and the memories of you know visiting a temple and how do you actually create the sure. complete structure around sure. that sure yeah yeah but the mesh you talked about uh, from from a from very young people to older ones as well but take us through you've got some incredible downloads as well but in your uh, uh, you know data analysis who what kind of people and what age group is really playing this game yeah so like i spend i mean like the bunch of time into gaming like almost a decade now right so the idea mm. like we as a company our thesis was like how we can i mean creatively find a way to teach our culture through mm. gaming right and like uh, simulation games are i mean really popular globally everyone talks about i mean like mm. the first person shooter or maybe the puzzle but simulation i mean like the one that i mean that category that mm. resonates well with i mean the reality of i mean the like i mean the game right so we i mean decided to mm. go on i mean with the shri ram mandir game with simulation kind of category because i mean puzzle usually i mean very complicated nobody can understand so our idea and our thesis was that like anybody who is like playing this game from 6 year old to 60 year old can easily understand mm. this game right without any tutorial so if like if you give, give this game to anyone else like other than maybe the indian they maybe need some tutorial yeah. but if any indian that is playing this yeah. game they definitely don't need to see any tutorial they like they connected pretty True. well with this game they can easily like understand every task whatever we are i mean like uh, doing in the game yeah yeah prashant you know when we talk about gaming and uh, you know i am a mom now and uh, i think very hard about gaming and the thing that really comes to mind is this whole idea of addiction right and i make it a point to ask all the game developers who come on how are you guys dealing with that in fact just you know this morning there was a tweet that came to our attention one of the viewers only wrote to us talking about how they had uh, you know the child had to be put into a gaming de addiction center and they talked about how young kids are really going on their words ruining their careers health professional relationships all because of gaming is that a conversation in the ecosystem are you guys addressing it and if yes how sure um you know games the way they are built actually they are built to addiction angle into it the reason why is because that helps you for better monetization and drives your revenue up and this has become yeah. a serious conversation right unfortunately this is at crossroads between business and obviously your moral conscience right what we have done in our game is that we have introduced a concept which we call as circuit breakers right what these are essentially if you play the game for a specific amount of time the way the game economy is designed you will not be able to progress mm. through the game let's say after playing 30 45 minutes because you almost have exhausted all the in this case flash that you have and you cannot move forward in mm. the game unless you wait for 24 hours more as a consequence this introduces almost like a stop gap that ensures that users That's are not playing yeah. hmm. beyond you know hmm. because i mean you take examples of first person shooter games right the, the most popular ones in india people play that for an average of 2 to 3 hours we can see even goes higher we realize that kids hmm. can get really addicted to this and you know as you asked the hmm. question the demographics of us we go from 6 to 64 uh, and a lot of kids love this game but we wanted to make sure that this doesn't cross over to the addiction point as a consequence we mm. introduce these concepts mm. of you know you play beyond 30 45 minutes the progression into the game becomes really really hard and you actually need to wait for mm. 24 hours before you unlock more uh, you know game economy um, in this case mm. flash to move forward in the game mm. right right, right. I mean, that's interesting to know that this is happening It's interesting to know that this is happening uh, but a 6 year old playing this game non stop is a troubling thought for all mothers I feel so this is just I want to leave you guys with that note that please you know as you uh, you know go forward as the gaming industry develops we must not take our eyes off the impact it will have on our younger generation as well thank you both thank you. and good luck with all that you're doing thank you so much thank you thanks All right, we gave you a little bit of glimpse of Ram Mandir, so let's tell you a little bit about that in detail and what's happening there. Where uh, magnificent, uh, the a uh, very very magnificent, beg your pardon, golden Ramayana has now been gifted to the temple. It has come from former Madhya Pradesh cadre IS officer Subramaniam Lakshmi Narayan. He and his wife Saraswati sort of decided to do this, and they've put their entire 
lives earning into this. So, we wanted to have a chat with them on why, what was the purpose that established this and how did they really uh, go about making it as well. So, joining us on the program next is Subramaniam Lakshmi Narayan, the former uh, IPS, uh, the IS officer uh, from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, hi sir, thanks so much for joining us here on the Breakfast Club. You've gifted a 147 kg. 147 kg Ramayana that is made of 24 karat gold, silver and copper in uh, to the Ayodhya temple. Uh, walk us through what exactly was the idea behind this. My wife Saraswati, extremely religious and the power behind all my success. She said why not we do an arpan to the Almighty with whose blessings we are doing so well. So the idea emanated from her. So we both decided that we will now make a golden Ram Charit Manas. We arrived at Ram Charit Manas, though in the south, people are more familiar with Valmiki Ramayana. But I was born and brought up in Delhi and I am an IAS officer of Madhya Pradesh Kada. And I know that Ram Charit Manas is very widely read in any case, whether it is Valmiki Ramayana or Ram Charit uh, uh, Manas, it is all the same. It is the story of Lord Ram with the Mariyada Purush. So we decided that we will make mm. a golden Ramcharit Manas and we engaged the same company which made the Shengol which is adoring our parliament today, the golden Shengol. Mm. The same mm. company Vumidi Dwellers which is one of the uh, major dwellers in the south. We had requested them to make it, they were kind enough to make it. Yeah, and uh, is it true that you dedicated your entire life saving to this book that you've come up with? It cost about 4.5 to 5 CR. Yes, madam, because whatever came as my director's fees and all this is all uh, been donated here for the last uh, 15 years after my retirement. Plus, I had a plot of land which I inherited from my father. So, I had to also sell it because as an upright silver, uh, government servant, I had nothing except my pension, which of course shall continue till I, my life lasts here in this world. Right. And also tell us, how did you transport this? Because it's 147 kgs. Was it taken in bundles? What was the process like to just ensure that it reaches safe and sound? Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing was transported by Vumidi Dwellers through the uh, logistic company. It was, uh, it was to be delivered and it was delivered at Hotel Radisson, which is the only, uh, uh, you know, one of those four star plus hotels of uh, uh, Ayodhya as on as on date. They were kind enough to take charge of that. And the police authorities led by the senior Subanda police, Mr. Rajkiran Nayar, and the Subanda police of the red zone, Mr. Pankaj, they helped me with all their men to transport these huge uh, uh, plywood boxes containing these things to the Ram uh, temple uh, premises. And there with the help of Mr. Champad Rai, they had all taken off their shoes and belts and they transported it near the Sanctum Sanctorum. And in the Sanctum Sanctorum, nobody is allowed uh, except the pujaris appointed by the trust. So, they had taken out only the front page of, uh, of, the, of the gold sheets which depicted the Rama Patabhishek and the se second page which uh, was fully the feet of the holy feet of the Ram Lala deity and, the, and, the, uh, and one page uh, containing Sundar Khan. These three were placed on the night of uh, um, uh, the April 8th and then after that it was on the morning of the April 9th, it was uh, a puja was done along with Ram Lala and after that they allowed us to touch it. Well, uh, thanks so much uh, for that, sir, and an incredible devotion that you have to be giving away your entire life savings to this. Uh, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. All right, uh, and today is Ashtami. That means tomorrow Ram Navi celebrations will be taking place across the country. And there are special arrangements being made in Ayodhya. Let's quickly take you through the special thing called Surya Tilak that is being organized. Now, what exactly is that? It will 
Uh, the Surat Alak will take place at around 12 p.m. tomorrow and it could last for about 3 to 4 minutes where sun rays will fall through mirrors and pass through a brass pipe to finally reach the idol. The rays will then fall on the second and third mirror in that order as you see in the screen uh, on your screen right now and from that they will get reflected on the forehead of Ram Lalla itself. So that incredible thing happening tomorrow. With that a quick break we are back with all the IPL action Ipam start by talking about an industry that has not just arrived but has exploded into the scene what do i mean by that Now this is an explosion of an industry that has happened world over not just in India so if i were to ask you today to name some of the largest segments or industries in india what would you say you would probably say cricket or you would say bollywood but what if i told you that there is an industry that has overtaken film entertainment to become the fourth largest in india it is gaming 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 tutorials gaming reactions games reviews games developing animation the list is long on what all is happening in this sector world over and sample this india has about 450 million gamers with over 90 million paid to play gamers gaming appears to provide an income to more indians than manufacturing and is only set to grow Look at the amount of money involved here. In the past 3 years, the online gaming industry has grown at 28%, reaching 16,428 crores. That's just FI23. In fact, it's said by 28, it's set to rise to 33,243 crores. And that's just the report that has come from eBay. And think about it. Why wouldn't it, right? There is a widespread smartphone penetration improved internet connectivity growing youth population and the development of local gaming content in fact take a pause and look at the room around you even our parents these days are caught up playing solitaire and candy crush on their phone all the time so much is the craze that even the prime minister acknowledged it so we thought let's sit down with some of india's top gainers and gamers in this case and show you exactly how does it work what's really going on over here so let's welcome on the program now this morning anshu bhisht he goes by the name gamer fleet and mithilesh patankar mith pat as he is known as uh, by uh, people world over good morning boys i have a lot to learn uh, in this segment but anshu let me begin with you You know there was a time and I'm still that generation there was a time when we thought gaming was Welcome back let's bring you everything you need to know about IPL and what happened Monday's IPL match all highlights from RCB versus SRH match quite a sad day for all you RCB fans out there where SRH beat RCB by 25 runs after posting the highest team total in IPL history watch this report by Jamie tomorrow more A day for records, a day for batsmen, not really a day for bowlers, maybe for Pat Cummins, as RCB conceded the highest total in the history of this tournament, 287 for just three wickets. That is what Sunrisers Hyderabad put up, thanks to a 39-ball century from Australia's ODI World Cup hero Travis Head. 39 balls. Yes, let that sink in. Process that stat. That is the fourth fastest hundred in the IPL's 16-year existence. And thanks to Abhishek Sharma, the opener, Travis Head, the opener, Heinrich Klassen coming out and blasting 67 at a strike rate of over 200, and then Abdul Samad getting 37 not out in just 10 balls. This is how SRH put 
RCB and their rather insipid bowlers to the sword by getting 287 for three. Just let that set in. Just the way like social media was going a buzz yesterday. All sorts of memes, all sorts of trends, hashtags. I was trying to track the match. I was trying to count the boundaries. And I was also trying to keep track of social media because on such days, especially when runs flow like a cannonball, you know, you expect social media to be a buzz and that's exactly what happened. Now, RCB got close, 262 to lose by just 25 runs. An achievement, many would say, but the problem of RCB's bowling just does not look like going away. I was wondering when I saw the toss yesterday, why in the world would RCB captain Faf Duplessis choose to feel, knowing full well that he just does not have the bowlers? And I was on a show right here on Cricket Next, and I said, I think today, 300 just might be breached. And it almost did, if not for Travis Head getting out for that fabulous 102. Still, 287, that is a record total. And it should not be any surprise to RCB's fans, I don't know how many are left after yesterday's performance, that their team is now just one win from seven matches. Still 10 out of 10. And I think RCB, the franchise, has reached that stage now where it is beyond them to make a late dash for the playoffs. Because the batting is reliant on just two or three players, Virat Kohli, Faf Dupesi and Dinesh Karpik, who by the way got a brilliant, brilliant 83. Not enough to really threaten SRH because they had, like I said, 287 on the board, but hats off to Dinesh Karthik for hitting all those sixes and taking the match somewhat closer than I'm sure many, many fans, RCBs included, thought this match would go to. But it just, it's getting impossible to shake that feeling that RCB, when the mega auction comes a few months from now, they'll need to press the reset button and go for an almost entirely brand new franchise. So this is not a new story of RCB's bowlers struggling to defend totals, you know. We saw 287, before that we saw 277. A lot of big runs are being scored against RCB. And unfortunately, the writing is on the wall. They just don't have the bowlers. Once again, Virat Kohli, Faf Dupressi gave them a terrific start. 79 for no loss in the power play. But that asking rate, as it kept creeping up 15, 16, 17, just too much pressure on Virat Kohli, who fell just after the power play. Faf Dupressi got another half century, his second now in the tournament, but just just too many runs for RCB and their big bats to chase down. No surprises that SRH utterly dominated this match. Yes, the Chinna Swami is known to be a bowler's graveyard, flat track, small boundaries. RCB were always going to come out hard at SRH's total, but a margin of 25 runs, very, very satisfying for Sunrise Hyderabad. And RCB fans, once again, must be wondering, where does it always seem to go wrong for us? All right, then let's uh, move on now. And next, we bring you a special section on financial markets powered by Money Control Pro, Money Control's premium destination for investing and business insights. Let's look at markets this morning. Gift Nifty trends indicate a weak opening for the Indian stock market as US markets close lower amidst tension between Iran and Israel. Asian markets have also uh, did slide as the rate cut expectation from US Federal Reserve are cut back. Iran-Israel tensions weigh in there as well. And crude oil prices rise as geopolitical tensions rekindle supply worries and gold prices are slipping. Let's look at the sector in focus now uh, by Money Control Pro where gold prices have risen sharply but that has not hurt demand for jewellery for most organised players which has been quite an amazing thing. Consumer preference for branded products is helping accelerate the shift from unorganised market to a more organised market. Even regulatory factors like mandatory hallmarking are also helping in. While the shares have been doing well, uh, the question for investors really is, can these players really continue to shine? You can log into Money Control Pro to find out more about India's gold jewellery sector and other actionable insights. This is a premium destination for all investing views, financial insights you will ever need to know. Brought to you by Money Control. All right, with that, it's a wrap on today's edition of The Breakfast Club. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Until then, stay safe, be peaceful, wear a smile on your face, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.
start by talking about an industry that has not just arrived but has exploded into the scene. What do I mean by that? Now, this is an explosion of an industry that has happened world over, not just in India. So, if I were to ask you today to name some of the largest segments or industries in India, what would you say? You would probably say cricket or you would say Bollywood. But what if I told you that there is an industry that has overtaken film entertainment to become the fourth largest in India? It is gaming. Gaming, gaming tutorials, gaming reactions, games reviews, games developing, animation. The list is long on what all is happening in this sector world over. And sample this. India has about 450 million gamers with over 90 million paid to play gamers. Gaming appears to provide an income to more Indians than manufacturing and is only set to grow. Look at the amount of money involved here. In the past three years, the online gaming industry has grown at 28 percent, reaching 16,428 crores. That's just FI23. In fact, it's said by 28, it's set to rise to 33,243 crores. And that's just the report that has come from eBuy. And think about it. Why wouldn't it, right? There is a widespread smartphone penetration, improved internet connectivity, growing youth population and the development of local gaming content. In fact, take a pause and look at the room around you. Even our parents these days are caught up playing solitaire and candy crush on their phone all the time. So much is the craze that even the Prime Minister acknowledged it. So we thought let's sit down with some of India's top gainers and gamers in this case and show you exactly how does it work, what's really going on over here. So let's welcome on the program now this morning Anshu Bhisht, he goes by the name Gamer Fleet and Mithilesh Patankar, Mith Pat as he is known as uh, by uh, people world over. Good morning boys, I have a lot to learn uh, in this segment but Anshu let me begin. A very good morning to all our viewers. You're watching the morning news on CNN News 18. I am Anjali Pandey here to take you through all the latest news and updates from across the nation and around the world. And we're starting off this bulletin with some breaking news that's coming in in the Salman Khan house firing case. 